What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here. In this video, we're just gonna hang out with some reptiles and give them some sun. So at the time of this video, we're not too far from our move date. We're gonna be moving or starting to move pretty much this time next week. So it's really, really not that long away now. Um, things are getting pretty exciting. I can't wait to show you guys all the new place and my plans and what everything's gonna happen there. It's really, really exciting. I'm kind of already got it all figured in my head, but because of this lockdown, I haven't actually been able to go out there and measure anything up to kind of figure out where enclosures are exactly gonna be fitting. I've got a bit of an idea, but I'll just have to wait and see for that. But yeah, in this video, I just thought, you know what, it's a little bit of a windy old, old uh, winter's day out there, but there's a little bit of sun getting about. So I thought, you know what, I might take a few of my reptiles out and just give them a little bit of a sun, even though it's going to be a little bit cool. But yeah, I thought it would be really good to get the, the animals out in the sun, get a little bit of UVB happening on them, see if I can just kind of show you guys a few little critters and how they kind of react to the sun as well, which would be nice. In particular, I want to get the young gill and I out, the little baby gill and I, and spend a bit of time with them potentially even atlas and maybe even karma jungle carpet so we might just see how that goes um but yeah stick around i do have another couple of little things that i want to do on this video i'm going to set up some springtails as well just because i've had a few colonies crush so i want to reset up a few of those um so i'll just quickly bring you along for that and just show you how i quickly whack all that together it's nothing too exciting and i have done a video on it before we'll just see how we go so this build for my oedua fembria is coming along really nicely i've just finish the background actual section of it. There are another couple of rocks that will be going into this tank that that are just kind of finishing up and I will show you a video on how I kind of put all this together as well. I've got the substrate in there. This is actually just a nice little shallow substrate. I decided not to do anything too crazy with drainage layers and things. Um, I can always change it down the line if I needed to, but this is a mix of uh, coir peat, yuki mulch, AK reptiles, bioactive arid substrate, crushed granite, um, and some red red sand. So yeah, there's a little bit of a mix going on in there. You can see some of these big chunks of granite in there that'll break down over time. Um, but yeah, really cool little tank. Decided to do a couple of ficus in this one just because, you know, sometimes you get these ficus down in gorges and stuff through those national parks around on the WA coast or WA in general. So yeah, it's a nice little build. Can't wait to get these guys in it because they're stunning little geckos. And I reckon it'll be really cool. Here's a quick look at the rocks that I'm actually building up for it as well. There's this nice big one that's going to be a nice big feature piece inside of there. And there's also another little one just to kind of accent it all. Just kind of painting different sides of them and rotating them. Just using the sun to help dry things up a little bit quicker. You can see there's a couple of little holes that need to be patched there so crickets don't get into them. That's okay, this is only kind of like the, the first real coat. So this is going to be, uh, yeah, coated three times I think. It will be generally the magic number for, for these builds. It's almost fused into the foam as well. Oop, there we go. Make sure I crack that off there. But yeah, it's going to be a really cool enclosure. So these tubs here, these have got springtails in them. And this tub also, I usually have my... Oh, I've got like a little colony of wood lice and stuff in this little tub here that are actually doing not too bad breeding. So I'm doing something right. Um, it's kind of a little bit... Oh, there's tons in there. That's good to know. Might need to start replenishing some enclosures. Basically, I just chuck in a little bit of oats or fish food or something and just spray this down once in a while just to keep it a little bit humid. But there's just tons of little bits of bark off an old build there. Um, and yeah, they just seem to thrive off that. It just looks like there's a few hundred getting around in there and I only started off with maybe 20, so that's doing well. Um, but yeah, anyway, I had my springtail cultures absolutely crash. And what happens is if you if you crash a springtail culture and you happen to have these type of mites in there, there's like these little, they almost look like a reptile mite, but they're not. They're like a little mite that's like a, it's like a type of grain mite or something like that. Somebody will probably correct me in the comments there. I had that go through and once the springtails had died off and crashed, I had about eight colonies or so that actually, that crashed and got overtaken with these mites. So what I'm going to do is split up the existing colonies that I do have. 
just start getting my colonies back into order so I can start dishing them around the enclosures again. As you guys would have seen in a previous video, just using horticultural charcoal that you can get from Bunnings. It's not that expensive, I think it's about 10 bucks a bag or thereabouts. And basically all you need to do is fill up these containers by about half of the charcoal. From there I'm just shaking it flat so it's not all over the shop with big peaks and stuff and big mountains in there. Just a little bit of dechlorinated water. You can use demineralized water if you want to. I just find that this is just easy. I've always got dechlorinator on hand because of fish tanks and frogs and stuff. Just want to moisten it up a little bit. Basically you just want a little layer of water in there, just enough so it keeps it nice and humid, but at the same time doesn't flood the springtails. I always just try to put a little bit in. You can always put more in if you need to. So before I actually go splitting up these colonies, what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of the food source that I feed my springtails, which is just simply an instant dried yeast. It's almost just like a little powder. I generally just feed them a tiny little pinch of it once or twice a week, depending on the colony size. Seeing as they're all gonna be springing around the place, I figured it'd be easier to put this in now rather than later. It's always a good idea to have your lids ready just when these guys start bounding all around the shop. It doesn't take much to start a colony. You can probably see there all the little springtails and stuff jumping around. Hopefully I've got the focus okay on the camera. So all I'm gonna do is pour a little bit of water into this just to help tip off some of these springies. few little cultures started up there. It's probably only about 20 odd springtails that have gone into each of them. That should be enough to get those going. These colonies that I'm taking from as well, they've got hundreds and hundreds in there so I don't feel so bad pillaging a few of them. But the easiest way to do it is with a little bit of water. You just pour a few off into these tubs. While I'm here, I may as well feed the actual existing springtail colonies as well. If you find that you do have any excess water, it's just easy just to pour it out into a tub or something of the sorts. What I might do in this instance is just pour a little bit more water into my wood lice enclosure, just to keep this bit more hydrated. And a few springtails in there is not going to hurt either. Like, that's like a clear indication that there's too much water in that tub. So I forgot to mention as well, by the time this video is coming out, I've actually created some discount codes as well for the Beach of Scaly Beast merch. So you can get shirts like this, etc., etc., over on teespring.com. The links will be in the description below. So yeah, I'll put up a little promo code down here somewhere for everybody to use. And patrons, you're going to have a special promo code with a little bit of extra discount because you guys are patrons. So make sure you go and check out patreon.com if you want to get some of the additional benefits of becoming a Patreon, you know, you're going to get a bit of extra content, you get early access to content, plus you get bigger merch codes and stuff like that, so you get more discounts there for supporting me month to month. But anyway, guys, let's go and get some of these Gillinoi out, because I want to see these guys in the sun, because that's when you get to really see their true colour shine. These guys are definitely starting to freak out a little bit, just getting that natural sunlight on them, they're not used to it. I think I might clean out their tub today too, they've been making a royal mess throughout here. I've got some spare mulches and stuff kicking around, so that's probably not a bad idea to, to get these guys spruced up. But I thought I'd give them a few minutes out here, just while I'm enjoying a coffee, to have access to beneficial UVB. They do get a little bit of it inside, but at the same time, nothing beats natural sunlight. You can see that guy there is absolutely loving basking in this. 
So the other guys are just hiding down underneath the little height there. It's always important that wherever they are, especially if you are taking them outside, to give them access to somewhere to hide and ways to get out of the sunlight too, just in case they want to get a little bit too hot. <laughs> These guys usually aren't this skittish, but as I said, this is something completely foreign to them. They're all juiced up from their morning heat. You can see how these couple here are just widening up their flanks and really soaking in all the sun like they can. And then you got that guy there that's staunching over in the back as well, trying to look all tough. Such funny little goannas. Okay, so we're gonna give these guys a clean out. They've been out here for a little while now, probably about 10 minutes or so. We can put them back into a tub you know that's clean but this is just annoying me that <laughs> this is looking so dirty i didn't realize how much gunk they had underneath all their all their hides and bits and pieces so one by one i'm just going to chuck these guys into a little container just to hold them it's a nice high-sided tub he's not getting out of there so one Two. Got to be careful that they don't get out the sides here. Three. I'm looking forward to getting these guys in the new place and hopefully getting them out of this little box. Or the very worst case, I'll give them something bigger to run around in. Alright, five little gill and I. Woohoo, nice and clean. Okay, so what I've got here is a mix of Fish Organics Coir Peat, uh, some washed Sydney sand, and I've also got some Eucalyptus Mulch. So the reason that I'm using a little bit of a mix, and in particular I like using you know, wood-based or, or moisture retention type products for small goannas is the fact that they can lose a lot of humidity where they are very quick because of the heat that's going into these tanks. So the benefit of having a couple of wood-based things is they actually hold a little bit of moisture unlike things like sand, which are really good at draining moisture. So I thought I'd just do kind of like a third of each, mix all these together. That should give me a pretty good blend for now. Usually I don't mind using just eucalyptus mulch, but yeah change it up a little bit on them occasionally it's a little bit of enrichment having something different in their, in their little tubs and of course this will kind of like dry out quite nicely as well just blend it all together that should do the trick so as most of you would have seen in a lot of my previous videos I do keep these guys pretty simple just for when they are raising up just to make sure that they're getting enough food and etc etc we got a little hide in a water bowl there, a few bits of bark there just for them to kind of crawl under. And then I also put this tile on top here, and this just allows that to heat up nice and strong underneath the heat light there. So we'll turn that back on, start warming that up for these little guys to get into. And while I am here, I will actually show you, things is really starting to cool down. I've turned off the heat lights to the gill and I in this tank. So this really worked well for me last year to cycle these guys. I've still got the Kimbo heating up over here and he's actually out on his log right now. So I was actually thinking about getting him out in the sun for a little bit of a closer look at him. So that's really a nice lizard. And then over this side, when the gimbal decides to react, got Loki. Get, Loki's a little bit cold right now, but his basking lights will come back on probably in about an hour or so. I'm trying not to heat him up too much over this winter period. It's kind of gets morning and afternoon heat. That's about all he needs. We may give him a feed too when those lights turn back on if I've got a few yabbies hanging around in that pond outside. If he allows it, I wouldn't actually mind getting Atlas out into the sun just to see how this little dude's doing as well. It's been a few, oh, probably about a month or so now since his last feed. He won't be getting one for a little while. He's such a beautiful snake. Absolutely love this animal. A little bit of a treat.
these boys love these giant mealworms. I do just give them as a bit of a treat, but I love filming eating them eating them because they look so cool. Where's the other boys? Oh, there he is. Right over in the back back corner there. I'll give you one more. stuck shit in your ear. I'll have to come back and pull that out for you. I love this lizard. So we got Mr. Wiggles outside now. Oh, I love these monitors. They're definitely one of my favorite monitors. Look at all those patterns and the tails on them. Absolutely gorgeous lizards, but I thought I'd get him out for a little bit of sunlight. He does have really good access to a nice Reptisun 10.0 T5 in his enclosure, but at the same time, as I keep saying, nothing beats natural sunlight. I used to be one of those people that didn't believe in UVB so much for sort of like little monitors like this, the Adatria and stuff. I didn't use it for a long period of time, and now I love giving it to them. And you can see much more activity and stuff coming out of the lizards when you do give it to them. Aren't they gorgeous? I love those sleek little heads that they have just to get into those nooks and crannies in burrows to be able to pull out other little lizards and skinks and all sorts of things that they can get their mouths around. I really love that whole region. Like I'm just obsessed with like the arid regions, the Kimberley regions, you know, all that WA coast and all the animals that come along through it. It just helped get a little bit of the stuck shed off his tail. The last thing I want is to lose any sort of Part of this beautiful tail that definitely is what makes them so ornate. They're such beautiful lizards. Look at that thing. It's absolutely stunning. I do wish I saw him out and about a little bit more and I think as he's getting a little bit bigger he's starting to get a little bit more confident. Can't get enough of these lizards. Check out who it is, it's Atlas. This is my beautiful male olive python. He's still only a little fella, he's probably about a metre and a half. He's looking a little bit lean, but he's a nice fit olive python. I don't like seeing these big obese chunky things that have got fat rolls everywhere. That's just not right. This guy only eats birds too, so that does keep the fat content down on him a fair bit because he's full of feathers. He's a beautiful snake. It looks like he's getting a little bit dusty, probably coming into a shed. Yeah. Awesome animal. Absolutely love this animal. Recently he's been a little bit hit and miss with <laughs> wanting to chew me so hopefully we don't see too much of that today and hopefully he doesn't get too excited about all these bandicoot burrows going off into the garden there Well, Mr. Sleepyhead is down in his cave there somewhere, down that back end. I can hear him scratching about and you can see all that dirt that he's flung up the top there. 
while I was in here I was just feeding some of the fish finally getting through all these guppies I do have some archer fish in here as well some Aussie native archer fish and gudgeons and things that are starting to kind of get through some of these guppies that I got from from a customer that brought them into work um, but yeah he's been a little bit slow I want him to wake up I want, to, want him to have a feed I just went and checked how many yabbies and stuff I've got in the, the tub out the back there's only a couple left but we'll try to give him a feed nonetheless hopefully if he actually wakes up Loki, come on. Come on, mate. Loki. Let's see if I snap these tweezers if it gets any action out of him. Maybe that sound might actually draw him to it because usually I kind of snap the tweezers or the tongs. Try to get some attention out of him. Loki. Come on, mate. Hey, look who it is. You want a little yabby? Yabby, yabby, yabby. Come on. Come on. You're a little bit slow. I whacked your lights back on for you. Can I have a yabby or what? Come on. You know you want it. You wait, you'll probably just explode out of this box in a second. If I'm not careful. You're all dusty. Look at you. Haven't been swimming in days. He doesn't want to. It's too cold. He wants to stay in bed. Come on, Loki. Come on, mate. Where'd you go? There you are. Got rid of that claw real quick. So these guys in the wild do feed on a lot of crustaceans, including things like crayfish and crabs and stuff that are hanging around mango forests. So these animals are absolutely built for eating these sorts of creatures. Let me see you chuck that down pretty quick. Give you one more. It's going straight to that claw. that so I know some people think it is cruel to feed some live animals and I do agree to a certain extent but invertebrates versus vertebrates are two pretty pretty different things you know Loki does make pretty quick work of these guys it's not like it's suffocating to death or anything like that over a period of kind of 10 minutes like it would with a python, for example, with a rodent. These things are usually pretty much gone in within a minute or so. So it's a bit quicker. These guys also don't have the same sort of nerve capacity that a lot of, a lot of mammals and birds and things like that have, so they don't necessarily feel it the same. Yeah, yeah that yabby's completely gone now, really. He's just going to be finishing the job now. And he'll go through and he'll clean up all those sorts of little bits of claws and stuff like that that he's left there too. That'll be a good little feed for him for a couple of days there. I'll go and put these other couple of yabbies back in the pond. Another quick thing that I forgot to tell you guys is I potentially have a few more critters on the way. These are all things that I've been kind of have in the works, a little bit hard to come by, a little bit obscure type animals. I'm going to be a little bit cryptic and leave it at that. But hopefully down the line when I'm settled into my new place and some other keepers and things have some success with some animals, there might be a few different animals that are hopefully be turning up in this awesome collection and uh yeah i'm going to be really stoked to bring that to you guys should they all come come about and into a fruition thanks for joining me on another video here guys i really appreciate you guys all watching make sure to drop it a like subscribe to the channel and drop a comment let me know if there's anything else that you guys want to see on this channel otherwise i'll just keep plugging away at these videos as i already am guys don't forget to check out patreon and teespring get yourself some merch if you are wanting to support the channel even further and i shall catch you guys on the next video Take it easy.